Hey guys, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Gloomhaven is a cooperative party-based RPG board game similar to D&D where we use our unique characters to complete a campaign of quests. Unlike D&D though, that uses players' choices and dice, Gloomhaven uses a deck of cards to dictate those choices and results. I was really excited to see a company do a digital adaptation to the game as I have the board game and have done play tests, but I have yet to have the opportunity to play with my friends. This will be a good opportunity to see, to get to know the characters and understand the gameplay a little bit better. Be aware, this is currently in early access and we currently only have adventure mode open to us, which is short roguelike scenarios, unlike the grand campaign that you may be accustomed to for the actual board game. The developers do plan on adding more characters, enemies, and a full campaign mode with a time frame of about a year from now. I intend on making a video on the rules and how to play the actual board game, so I won't go too much into this video and just show you the features and how it plays. Let's get started. So as I said, uh, there's only the adventure mode right now, so let's take a look. It takes us to the character selection screen where uh, we start off with having uh, two player parties, but um, you can have more once you defeat uh, more bosses. So right now uh, you have uh, two party compositions of four different uh, characters. You have the Brute, Crag Heart, Scoundrel, and the Spellweaver. Um, there are two really good combinations which is right here, the uh, Spellweaver and the Cragheart. And then, uh, because they're a good ranged uh, group, they generate um, different magic elements, which increases their ranged abilities. And then we have the, let's take a look, we have Swift Cars, which is the Scoundrel and the Brute. Um, these are supposed to be uh, also another good two-player combination. So I've had a chance to play both of them and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with this combination right here of the Brute and the Scoundrel. The Brute is more of an uh, a fighter. I wouldn't say tank. I, I, I wouldn't say that there's any real tank characters at least within the initial characters that you play with. Uh, the Scoundrel is your typical uh, high DPS t type of character. But let's get started. Uh, just, j just to uh, highlight some things, uh, I have played with this uh, set of characters before, and um, the Brute starts off with the Boots of Striding, uh, which I haven't figured out how to activate, and the Minor Healing Potion, uh, while the Scoundrel uh, has the Eagle Eye Goggles. Also not too sure how how to trigger it um, doesn't go into detail uh, there's there's no tutorial right now so either way let's get started uh, I'm on normal difficulty which uh, has less enemies we start with two blesses which means there's a higher chance of doing double damage and uh, our heroes have more health um, so let's get started or continue so I completed one set of scenarios. I moved from Wayward, which was around here, the town of Wayward, and I've gone to the Burnt Tavern. And our, the goal is to try to make our way to Mornlight Hideout, but uh, that is too hard. I, I don't think we have any chance of even remotely completing it. So we have three different paths right now to get stronger. We can take the easy route, which is Journey to Demon Spine Hollow, uh, this area of the petrified forest is believed to be cursed with sightings of demons, imps, and even a headless horseman. It seems safe enough, but maybe it doesn't quite seem right. Uh, it's easy. It has one scenario, uh, four gold as a reward and five experience, and you get an amulet of life. Whereas uh, Journey to Curse Keep uh, is medium difficulty. It's still one scenario, a little bit more gold, a little bit more experience, and you get winged shoes and then journey to the hole and that's hard difficulty three scenarios 40 gold 53 experience 
I think um, just to hopefully get past it, we're going to be doing the Journey to Demon Spine Hollow. So we select that. And when you. Although we're going to Demon Spine Hollow, we have to get through the Lost Crypt first. Uh, it tells you these tombs swarm with the undead. It's time to end their suffering. Uh, we will be facing off against living bones, living corpses, bone rangers, and living spirits. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get through them. So we're going to travel. Sometimes when we're traveling, we'll have an encounter which can affect our gameplay. Okay, so that's adventure. So one of the things with Gloomhaven I find is that the rooms are very small, so you're going to be face to face with uh, enemies right away. There's no real like planning, you know, you know, tanks, tanks in front, you know, casters behind, like you'll be right in front of them and they might be able to get right in your face right away. So on the uh, top, it shows you the different types of creatures. It has, it has your characters, the scoundrel and the brute. Uh, right now, right now we have the scoundrel selected, and it shows you your list of cards. The numbers indicate the initiative. The first, the first card you pick will dictate the initiative. Uh, the lower the number, the faster or the sooner you go uh, in the round. And um, we'll see in a second uh, when you, you pick two cards, and um, one card you'll use the top portion, and the other card you'll use the bottom portion. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and you'll be picking cards for both your characters. Uh, once that once that's done, once you pick your cards, then you'll see cards uh, for our enemies, and it'll dictate what they do and what their initiative is. And then it goes by um, player or creature initiative. So we have a living corpse which has five hit points. You can tell the hit points uh, uh, above the the specific creature or, or character, and. Um, uh, it, it shows you by the length of the bar and the ticks, or you just look at the number, and it's easy to tell right there. Uh, so Living Corpse has 5 health and does 3 damage, so it does quite a bit of damage. Whereas the we have a Bone Ranger Elite, and they also do a lot of damage and has 3 range. 3 range is 3 hexes, so right now the Bone Ranger can't technically hit us unless they get bonuses to range, or they have 1 movement. Uh, then we have Living Bones, which will be the weakest one. Um, it um, well, it has the same amount of, amount of hit points, but um, it can move two. So it can move more than, than the Living Corpse. Uh, and it does do less damage, but one of the special things is innate target two, meaning that um, it can target two enemies um, at one time. So on, on every attack, so that's we don't really want to be adjacent to the living bones. So let's figure out what we're gonna do. Hmm. Now the thing is. It's not just this one room. There is this door right here, and there might be anywhere between one to three more rooms after this. And uh, so we gotta plan and not and not exhaust all of our cards. So I think what we're gonna do is for this guy, we're gonna do single out so that we can get the next four attacks targeting enemy adjacent to none of their allies. Add plus two to the attack. So we use the bottom. Let's take a look at the top. What top part do we want to do? I think throwing knives. Okay, so we're going to do single out and throw knives because I imagine enemies will get close enough. They're, they're, they're going to move closer to us to fight. Single out, throwing knives. So initiative of 86. We can do it the opposite way of throwing knives, single out, and then uh, we will be able to go first, but then we won't be in range to throw our throwing knives, so we won't do that. 
uh, for the brute. I imagine that the living corpse will move one, and for the bone ranger to attack us, it'll need to move at least one. And I don't think this rock right here is an is an obstacle. Only this this chalice thing here is an obstacle. So let's see. On the next six sources of damage from attacks targeting you, you gain one shield. This is not bad. So we'll stop one damage, so over time that, that'll be good. Spare dagger. Okay, I think I'll do ward with strength and spare dagger. Okay. So it has a range of three, which means that if they at least move one one tile closer to us, we'll be able to hit them. Okay, so once you've picked your cards, then the monsters pick their cards. So it starts off on the from left to right, the, the card that was pulled with the highest initiative. So the Bone Ranger Elite has the best or the fastest initiative. They're going to heal one, target two, which is fine because everyone's at full health. Then it's going to attack two with a range of three. Okay, target two, so it can't hit us. So it's not going to heal anyone. It's not. It should not be able to shoot anyone. Then the living corpse uh, is going to move forward to us and uh, not attack anyone. And then the living bones, living bones is going to do damage. Okay, let's just continue. So see if it heals. It does nothing. They can't heal above their total healing. I'm going to do this. Okay. So uh, on your turn, you get to choose whether you use the top or the bottom of the card first. Um, and you'll notice at the top and bottom of each card, they actually have a little part um, for it. So uh, if you don't want to use the bottom part, you can instead use the alternate part of the card which is to move up to two spaces. Or for the top part, you can instead just do two, uh, two attack damage. Um, there are reasons for it, I won't really get into it, but uh, so we're gonna do this first. So we're gonna shield ourselves. Okay, that's done. Now, so if we look here, we can't target anyone. So it doesn't really matter whether I selected the the, the actual ability or the alternate, it won't really do anything. So we're just going to skip, which is unfortunate. Okay, so the zombie did his thing, and now it's my turn. Uh, we're going to... Well, the zombie did not move at all. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to do this thing, which will buff the guy. Now the things with buffs is that they put your cards aside, so you actually got one less card for the entire game, and then after that, it's, it's totally burned. So it's a good idea, but at the same time, it might not be a good idea because had I used the top part of the card, I can keep using single out unless I I lose it in a different fashion. So now that I have that, I'm going to use throwing knives. Uh, so let's see. On your next four attacks, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies, plus two attacks. So I could kill something outright, either the zombie or the living bones. Oh no, I can't, because it'll be four damage. So I think because the zombie or the living corpse has better potential damage to do more damage overall, I'm going to target him. Oh, I have two targets, never mind target both. The target 2 ability allows me to target two different guys, which is fantastic. The modifier card gives more damage. And I don't know what happened with them. I think, see the problem is, whenever you do an attack, it show, it, there's a modifier card which either does more damage, less damage, or can do double damage, or even um, Less. I can't really show you on the right hand side, but under where it says attack modifiers, it tells you uh, there are six, six different, six chances to get a zero, meaning that you won't add or subtract any damage. And then four, five, I can't read it, five 
dots that indicate there's a five five chances to get plus one damage, five chances to get minus one damage. And I think that was the one time that we we had a critical fail. And whenever you do a critical fail or I think a critical success, you shuffle it back into the deck. So there's a there's a chance that it'll happen again. But we did get to kill one of the living corpse right off the bat, which is great. So, new round. We are going to... Let's see. I want to try to kill that elite archer as soon as possible, because he'll be doing a lot of damage to us. So, let's see. I need to move three spots to get into melee range. I might try this. Sweeping blow and overwhelming assault. Hopefully I can one-shot the um, Bone Ranger. And for you, I'm going to do move three, one, two, yep. I can do move three and poison. So poisoning, uh, when you attack them, it do, does one additional damage. If I do backstab, it gets rid of it, so I should I should use that only if only if that's good. So no. I think what I'll do is I'm going to do special mixture, maybe venom shiv. No, that's not good. That's wasting. That's wasting it. and quick hands. That should allow me to move three, poison the living bones, then I'll do quick hands and it will do two damage plus the one three plus his special passive plus two. So hopefully that'll work. Okay. So living bones is second in initiative. Bone range will go last which kind of works out if everything works perfectly which it may not. So let's move our... I wonder if I should move... Nope. I want to go here. Okay, so we're going to confirm movement. Skip movement. We're going to poison this guy. We're not going to move. And then we're going to attack. What's enough damage? Okay, it's close enough. Oh, he attacked us, but he didn't do any, 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 or enough damage, so which is great. So now, we are going to move three. Hopefully, he doesn't push us back. Wait, does he have a push? No, he doesn't have a push. And then we're going to do overwhelming assault. Oh. No. Skip push. And now we're going to attack. So when we do overwhelming attack, we'll do a ton of damage, but and give us two experience, but then it burns the card, so we can't use it for the rest of this specific scenario. So we're hoping it works. Yes. Good, he said. And whenever we kill someone, uh, they drop some gold on the ground. Uh, the amount of gold I should be based off the uh, difficulty level. So, um, do, but the only way to get the gold is if you end your character's turn on that hex, or you use um, an ability card uh, that has the loot. But um, neither one has that. So that's the end of that round. Let's see. Let's see if the scoundrel has a way to kill this guy really quickly. Mm. We can do this. Thieves neck. So I think we're going to do... We'll do the backstab for the speed, but the thieves neck for the attack. That should kill the guy. 
and then for the brute, he's going to open up the next room. Um, it's unlike most D&D games, you don't actually want to uh, go too slow. It, like, like there's a time limit, and going slow is actually bad in, in a sense. So I think what we'll do is we'll do grab and go. We'll do grab and go, and we'll do retaliate eye for eye. Is that right? Yes. Hopefully that works. Okay. So living bones will go second. Okay. And we are going to attack this guy. Confirm. There. He's down. And unlike traditional D&D games, you don't actually get experience for killing creatures. So, um, so it's not like the scound uh, scoundrel is getting experience before doing that. So that's done, and we're not going to use backstab. So we'll just use the second ability, and we'll skip your attack. So we'll skip. Okay. Now we're going to look at the brute. So he's going to use move 4, and we're going to confirm movement. Oh, he opens up the door. Now, let's see. Not too sure if we should get closer to the archers, or get farther, or like, kind of like... I'm not too sure what we should do, because I don't think the skeleton should be able to reach us there. So I think I should move right here because the skeleton can't jump across there. So I'm going to confirm, move as close as possible. This might be a big mistake, but we'll see. And we're going to turn on retaliate. So he's going to gain experience with retaliates. He'll do two damage to anyone that I believe does melee damage to him. Oh. So when you get damaged by enemies, you get three different choices. To burn one available card, meaning that one of the existing cards that you haven't used yet, uh, you get rid of it for that scenario. Uh, you might think that's not too bad, but that's kind of like life as well. When you run out of cards to use, then, the, um, then your character's out. I can receive damage, he has enough health, he has 12 health, or I can burn two discarded cards. None of them's really good. I feel like once you approach taking more than two damage, you should maybe choose uh, either to burn. Yeah, to, to burn. But we're gonna just take the two damage. This might be really bad. We took three damage. We're still gonna take it. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, we might have to start burning. Spare dagger, grab and go. Let's see. Um, we'll burn one available card. None of them are good options. Oh, thank God. So even though he didn't do any damage to us, he still took two damage. Oh, he's back again. Did no he almost killed he almost killed himself from retaliation which is perfect but he might not survive next round so let's take a look at what the scoundrel is going to do oh boy I think what we're gonna do is we're going to do flanking strike Good. Now him, on the other hand, we are in trouble. Oh, but don't you have a health? Yes. Let's use that. 
Oh wait, you can't use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trample. And we want to cleave. We want to kill as many things as possible. but he has to be fast enough to do it. So here's the choice. In in, in an ideal world, we would pick Trample and Leaping Cleave, but Leaping Cleave has 54 initiative. I'm quite sure things will probably kill this guy before that happens. So I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do Provoking Roar and Trample to have high initiative and still do damage to things. Which is good because everyone drew pretty, pretty, pretty quick initiative. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to trample. Let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Can't move into this guy. So we're going to kill, hopefully, the skeleton, because uh, trample damage should automatically apply damage. There's no modifiers at all. Confirm attack. Okay, perfect. He died, but it did no damage to the living spirit. We're in trouble. And what do we want to do? This guy. Wait a second. <coughs> Actually, no damage. We're so screwed. And we're gonna heal. <coughs> we played too aggressively. But then again, we have a lot of ranged enemies. Okay, so we are going to move five. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five for movement. And then we're going to go invisible from action. Okay. Uh, notice that he created the darkness element. So if some sort of skill made use of darkness, uh, it, it would be buffed. The end of that. Uh oh, here we go. No damage. Good. Oh, damn. Now, here's the question what should we do? I think one damage is fine. One damage is fine. Okay, so the brute lives to, to fight another day. Now, we have two options. We can make use of the remaining two cards that we have, or we do a uh, long rest, which we don't want to do. The long rest will give us 99 initiative. We heal two, and we get all the uh, item cards back, uh, as well as any discarded cards, which are these grayed out cards. Anything that's red, we can't use again. So he already has three cards he can't use. Um, and uh, we get to discard, we get to, I, I think we burn one card of our choice. Yeah, yeah. So one of the discarded cards uh, we get to uh, do, but he's not going to really survive this way. And is there a card that we want? No. I think this is a good option right now. Okay, yeah, we're going to do that. Shield Bash. So, okay, and now. Unfortunately, my God, this guy has no option, so he's going to perform a short rest, and he has to get rid of Thief Snack. So when you take a short rest, um, it any of your discarded cards will go back into your hand for you to use, but one of the cards of those cards at random will be burned. So it's chosen Thief Snack, which is oh. It's just fine. It, it, it would be kind of good because usually an attack ability is at the top of the card, but this one is at the bottom. 
but um, that is fine. I could take one damage to redraw, but I think it's okay. So now we need to kill something extremely fast. Um, if I can get to this guy, I can do flanking strike and like one one shot him, but we can't do it. Hmm. Backstab, backstab will not work either. And he has invisibility, which I can't. I forget what it did. Let's see. Uh, double the value of the attack and gain two experience. So I think throwing those actually might not be too bad. So I think what I might do is I'm going to do throwing knives for the initiative and Venom Shiv to maybe move into a better position. One, two, three, four, five. So I can move next to this guy and hit. Uh, throwing knives has a range of three. One, two, three. Okay, we'll try that. Throwing knives and Venom Shiv. Right? Okay. Okay, so they all have low, low initiative. Let's see, Living Spirit is going to move and curse us, which curses at a chance to, I think, do no damage or less damage. So, and that's all enemies within range. Oh, that's bad. Okay, Bone Elite. Bone Ranger. Ooh, we don't want to be next to each other. Okay, so I don't want to be next to, to my friend. So... That's not good. Yeah, I think I'll go there. Yeah, I think I'll move there. Confirm movement. That will get us in range. And I won't be in... Or I won't be adjacent to, to my guy. So, let's see. Confirm targets. Let's do it. Double damage. Oh yes. Nice. Oh. Is that double damage? Did you kill him? No. The game doesn't show doesn't do a very good job showing whether you hit or how much you did damage for. That is bad. Okay. So um I am going to move closer and do the leaping cleave. Attack, confirm movement, skip movement, leaping cleave. There we go. I hope. Let's cross our fingers. Three damage. It should hope it would kill technically both guys. If we're lucky. Yes, that is a good outcome. Now the question is, is there another room after this? And there isn't. So hopefully I get to show you guys a winning. Yeah. Oh, we took two damage. No. He did not take any damage. Fantastic. So now he has to take a short rest because he has no cards. If you have no cards, you're forced to either take a long rest or do a short rest. We're going to do a short rest because we don't want to um, forego any, any, um, any turns. Because if you take a long rest, you don't get to do any actions that turn. And he's kind of, he's low health, he won't die, but at the same time I want to wrap up this episode for you. So we select a short rest for the Brute, and we have to burn Shield Bash, which is not an idea, but that's fine. It's not like we're taking damage. So let's see. Hmm. I like the Spare Dagger. If I was right next to the guy, that is. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I want to move next to him, and um, I think I'm going to move next to him and disarm. So I'm going to do Provoking Roar, and we're going to do Eye for an Eye. Then for our Thief, let's see, do we have anything with high movement? Backstab, six, one, two, three, four, five, very nice. And 
Perfect. Oh, but we don't want to do that. Let's try 30. special ability still? I can't tell. Okay. I think we're going to... Good, just loot. Loot one. Loot one with... Let's see. Okay. Special mixture and quick hands. So, the scoundrel's going to be a little bit greedy and he's going to uh, be looting this turn. The archer will want to move and attack with the range of two, so he's going to do heavy damage. He might kill my guy outright. But if we can disarm him, we'll be in good good shape. So I'm going to move here. What the? Okay. And now we're going to disarm him. Nice. Three damage was taken, and he's disarmed. Should, so he shouldn't be able to attack. Let's see what happens. He does get to move though. So, my guy is going to use the top card to move to. He's going to move right. I kind of want to move closer. Yeah, we're going to move closer. Oh, by the way, um, if you complete a scenario or like this mission right here, uh, the gold that we didn't pick up we don't get it, it it doesn't make sense it's like we're in a rush so if we any of the gold and treasures we don't pick up we're not going to be able to get at the end at the end of this mission so you kind of want to loot selectively so we're going to move no 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 I almost did it wrong oh no oh i did this totally wrong what I did was, I forgot that, yes, I want to move, but, hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're going to move here. Oh, he can only heal self, that's really bad. Yeah, bad, bad options all the way around. just to get closer to the enemy. Here, we'll move here. I did not play that correctly. And we will do that. Well, you know what? If I, if I move the three and then use the quick hands, I could have attacked him. That's a bad, bad, bad mistake, okay? Oh, oh wait. I can still go closer. There, let's do it. Let's just win win this scenario. Win for a movement, and we can attack. Hopefully we'll win. Yes, we did. So, that was the requirements. Uh, per the top right, kill all enemies in the room, which we did. Unfortunately, like I said, we didn't loot any money, so we actually don't get any additional money other than the normal quest rewards. So, end the round. There you go, it shows you some accomplishments. Basically, no additional gold, and we killed eight enemies, nothing special that we did. So we finish. And that is completed. And then we keep heading on to the place. I believe there might be an encounter, which maybe I can show you. Uneventful. But we did complete that uh, scenario, I guess. So um, we enter the village and we get the reward, which was four gold and the five experience that it outlined, plus an amulet of life, which we can equip to our characters, which 
During your turn, perform a heal one self action. So that's so it would be like a free action to heal yourself, which is not bad. We can maybe give our brute that. Uh, and our stuff has lost durability. So don't really know. So we lost a card, which we weren't even using. So the brute, we can equip the amulet of, of life. It'll only last, I guess, that, that one scenario from now. And that's it. And now we get three more choices. We can go to Demon Spine Hollow. This area of the Petrified Forest is believed to be cursed with sightings of demons, imps, and even headless horsemen. Oh no, no. The journey to Demon's Gate. The major town, er town of the area, Demon's Gate walls held firm <laughs> in the war with the Valrath. Man, many came here for shelter in the war and their families never left. A good place to find equipment for your travels, but experts, but, but expect to pay for it. And I have only 23 money, which is not bad, but I don't think that can really buy us too much. It's an easy, which is probably what I would end up doing in, in the next uh, video. We can go to the general store. We can go to some U Ugo's Ungents. And it's easy, only one scenario in between. F only four gold, eight experience, and you get Boots of Striding. Or we can select a journey to Low Town, which is the hard difficulty scenario. Lowton houses the descendants of the refugees from the Great War. Some have worked out, some have worked out how to make a living. Many haven't. Life is cheap here, and some shops are too. Life is cheap here, and some shops are too. Oh, that makes no sense. But don't expect to find powerful magical artifacts. Okay, more gold, more experience. Boots of dashing. Or we can go back to the Burn Tavern and get lots of gold, lots of experience. That looks like it's even more, way more, but it's because it's three scenarios long. A whole lot of stuff. So we're going to head to the uh, Demon's Gate next. But uh, I think that is where we're going to end today's uh, video. Uh, I hope this gave you a good idea of how the game plays. I'm actually very happy with this. This game was, uh, I think, $28 Canadian uh, on Steam. And um, sometimes you expect games like this to not be very well made or very faithful to the actual game. But um, uh, I bought Terraforming Mars on Steam and I got Gloomhaven. I'm very happy with both. I'm impressed with the uh, polish. Um, there are some things that can be approved and of course is not very much to the game right now but you do uh, it is going to be cheaper now in early access than when the game uh, does uh, launch in a year or so with more of the uh, things to do uh, but i'm i'm happy with this and i think uh, it's, it's it's good practice for the actual game when i play with my friends so uh Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, check out the rest of my channel or my blog, uh, nightknowledge.com, for uh, more videos on board games, video games, and how-tos. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.